Welcome back. It is um, it's that time of the week again. Uh, today is the 2nd of February. We have uh, well and uh, truly done with January. Um, yeah, 2nd of February 2021. Uh, I'm back again with my good friend Dove uh, for another week of uh, Sourcing Challenge Weekly. I'm super happy to be here and I told you many times that this is the best thing that is happening during the week and I always look forward to spending some time with you. And for those who don't know, we are we are doing this on a weekly basis and what you see is a, just a short snippet of our of our very long conversation and uh, if you want to if you want to join us and follow us do make sure to su 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 do make sure to subscribe and follow us and follow our journey and share your feedback comments and maybe even share some ideas what you would like us to talk about exactly i mean there's there's always something for us to talk about um Dov and I never have a problem actually getting to talk. Some of it not, might not be that interesting, but if you have things that you want to share with the rest of the sourcing slash recruiter community, yeah, uh, definitely contact us, write us, uh, and let us know that one, you like what we're doing or you have something that we would like to talk about. And if you don't like what we're doing, we want to hear about that as well, because this is always a way to learn and to grow. And um, don't get us wrong, just because we have a podcast doesn't mean that we know everything. <laughs> and I think that that's uh, the beauty of being a sourcer when we, we are always learning. Because if you, if you meet someone who says they know everything, I would run. Uh, because I don't think that's realistic. Uh, because some of the coolest people that we've met in the, in, in the industry, they're learning all the time. And, and honestly, I haven't met anyone who would be that kind of, oh, I know everything kind of type. It's... It doesn't happen because no. everything is changing all the time and we do need to explore new things. So, yeah. Speaking of, uh, if you listen to the last couple of weeks, you know that we've been running a promotion, uh, which we finally got around to actually make public and get it out there. And I actually got the time to write the show notes last week um, so we could put it up. Uh, Robot Proof Recruiter. Uh, our good, good friend who is running a mastermind, uh, Katrina Collier, uh, has, you know, because Dove is still in her mastermind, uh, we had a signed book uh, from Katrina that we wanted to give away. Uh, it's been running the last two weeks. We had 54 people sign up that they wanted to be part of the, the competition. Uh, and we drew a winner. Uh, and... I can announce the winner. It is uh, Laura Gonzalez, who was actually one of the first ones to sign up. Um, so congratulations, Laura. Uh, I will reach out to you directly to get all your details and uh, yeah, hopefully get a little bit of your story as well. Um, I don't think we know each other. And if we do, yeah, even better story, um, but we'll definitely reach out. And for everybody who did participate, thank you very much. We will run things like this again, definitely. Um, we might plan it a little bit better next time so that we have you know, maybe run it for a longer time um, at different prices, but it's definitely something we're going to be doing um, in the future. But thank you for the people who did participate. Uh, and Lara, yeah. you definitely have a uh, signed copy of this book coming your way, um, which was exactly what I meant with talking about learning, reading books. We keep talking about it, whether that's Katrina's book or Jan's book or uh, we keep talking about different courses and different, you know, educational things that we find uh, doing our kind of look at what's going on in the week. That's, I mean, I've been doing recruitment now for 20 years and I constantly, whether that's conference talks or online training or books on the subject, um, I constantly look for new things to learn uh, because this industry is not static. There's always something to learn. There's always new things coming up. And if you don't stay relevant, it's going to be a hard, like, it's going to be hard to stay relevant in this industry. And uh, at the same time, for those who were interested in getting the book, uh, I would recommend, first of all, connect, connecting with Katrina and just following her because she is always sharing a lot of content, uh, both on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Uh, don't be too rude and, in, you know, don't say, hey, add me to your friends on Facebook. I, I'm not sure how she's using Facebook for that. Um, I would, for example, I would only accept people that I know. However, LinkedIn is a different space and she is really sharing a lot of content that would be useful and, you know, kind of in a shorter snippets and shorter chunks of information that you can like bite size, you know, like uh, th that can be useful for you. So do, uh, do, uh, <laughs> I would recommend doing that. And, um, and yeah, and, you know, 
as well, think about any other people that you can follow in the, uh, you know, when you see any of the conferences, speakers uh, who talk about the subjects that are relevant to you or interesting or something that you're passionate about, companies that you would like to work for, always follow them on LinkedIn. You kind of automatically send the signal that you're interested and it will be easier for you to get the updates that are relevant and to filter through all of the noise that is always online. So this is what I do at least. No, and I know, I mean, I specifically know that there's companies out there that when they do searches on people that they want to work for them, will look at, like they will definitely have a bias towards people that are already following them as a company. Uh, you know, and if it's a consumer product, they will look at, you know, people who that they can see your customers and things like that. That would always be they would always look at them first for when choosing people that are going to work for. So, yeah, definitely follow them, sign up. Um, and with Katrina as well, uh, if you're at that stage where you you really want some more training, um, Katrina's Mastermind is like is still open and it's running for a year. Uh, definitely a good investment. Uh, it's something that. If you want to take your kind of, you know, recruitment game to the next space, especially in the kind of mindset about thinking about how you are as a recruiter, how you are um, projecting yourself when you're trying to talk to candidates and just in general, like how you well, become a robot proof recruiter, uh, then check that out. The, we're going to put the link in again. It was the link both last week and the week before yep. that uh, to the robot, uh, robot proof recruiter mastermind that Katrina is running for the next year. I always mess up the name. Like for me, it's just so confusing. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, I'll, I can try robot proof recruiter. You see, like, it's just like, I don't know what it is, but for me, it's like too many R's or something. You're talking about sourcing challenge weekly. So, I mean, we have to like, I think it's just like, we're in that club of long domain names. Yeah. And, uh, and the mastermind starts on the 16th of February. I will be joining and uh, there will be, I think, another 14 people uh, joining. So it's going to be a cozy a cozy hub um, and yeah, join us. Uh, I think it will be definitely fun. Definitely. Um, and last week as well, uh, we talked about sourcing on kind of untraditional sites, uh, looking at Meetup, uh, Slack, things like that. Uh, in that vein, uh, in the last week or so, Jan Tixer uh, published an article on both on Medium and on LinkedIn, where LinkedIn, where I saw it about how to find people on Clubhouse, which is this fancy new audio network social media uh, that seems to like everybody signing up on and doing kind of impromptu conferences and talks and things like that. Uh, Jan wrote an article about how to find people on Clubhouse without actually having an account on Block that. So yeah, x-raying into the sites, what, you know, what kind of data is there, what you can find and, and how to find people. So. Yeah, in the vein of what we were speaking about last time, there is going to be certain um, certain type of people that will sign up there and, and give rich information in their profile on Clubhouse about what they're about and why they're there or the channels that they're going to be following. Um, like I know a lot of that, like I'm listening to a lot of podcasts on how to podcast and a lot of them are kind of going on Clubhouse doing different events. Um, so, you know, a lot of affinity groups would be there. Uh, this is just the kind of latest. Uh, and uh, as always, Jan is is there to kind of look at how can I find these people. Uh, but I think one of the conclusions that he are, it's not going to be an exclusive list about everybody that's in a specific channel. Uh, it's just a, you know, a, a little taster of it. Um, so you, you do probably need to have an account. And uh, I mean, the, the more Clubhouse grows, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be different, different things that's going to, going to, you know, that's going to come with the scale of it. Uh, hopefully it's something we can do, we can use for actually sourcing people on as well. And at the same time, from what I understand that at the moment, Clubhouse is only running on iOS devices. So that's, I saw quite a lot of uh, comments on, on Facebook and on LinkedIn about it. Uh, if we really think about it, 10, 15 years ago, having an iPhone was a really cool thing. And it was um, maybe, you know, when you had an iPhone, it was prestige in some way. Uh, now not having an iPhone means that you're a rebel and, uh, and <laughs> actually part, more part of 70% of the world, basically. Yeah. And a lot of people are switching from iPhones away. So it's a very interesting decision for the company to roll out a, a, a really cool solution, only limiting users to iPhones. Um, that's, that's to me, that's a bit bizarre, 
I, I would definitely going to be checking it out because I always dive into new tech and, <laughs> and trying to, I remember I brought all of my friends to Facebook when it was launched way back. And in Lithuania, we had a, a, a similar concept for like a competitor, like a local one. I was like, everyone needs to go to Gmail. Everyone needs to go to Facebook and all of that when no one even knew what it is. And that was really cool, new concept. So, and, and it's a shame that they're limiting the, the options for others. And uh, I think it's just as much about how big their technical team is. So you need to start somewhere. Um, I know the app was originally supposed to be a podcast recording app. Um, and they took some of the, so basically it's, it's a couple of pivots away. Now it's a social network. Uh, that's not really what the idea was originally. So I think it's more of a, a bit like Slack was just the chat function in a multiplayer game that they then spun out as a separate kind of thing. So yeah, Clubhouse was a, a podcast recording app um, that just happened to be iOS to begin with. But yeah, with the, with the kind of recent popularity, I'm sure there's going to be an Android version coming soon. Um, but it's, you know, it's about having enough people actually sign up and finding some way of actually monetizing it um, so that they yeah. have you know, money to hire people like us to find them developers to do the Android version. Exactly. So if you are one of those who is on iOS, do check it out <laughs> and do let us know in the comments if you found anything cool, useful, not necessarily for sourcing, but even for content. Uh, if you find any cool channel, if you find any cool channels that you would like to share, please do let us know. And as Dov said, Katrina Collier is actually on there and is, uh, I think today, tomorrow, one of these days, she's been doing a couple of um, talks and uh, kind of things where she talks about, yeah, recruitment and uh, being human and uh, just being cool like Katrina is. Yeah, and basis. Glenn is there as well. Uh, they were hosting together a, a show for, for a long time. And both Glenn and I, we will be joining Katrina at the, at the Mastermind. So do join us um, if that's your thing. Thanks, man. And I saw you uh, found the article that Balash wrote uh, based on the uh, data that um, our good friend Andre Bradshaw had uh, kind of gathered in terms of people using the role sourcer and that the kind of decline, the quote unquote decline in sourcers in the last year or so. And, and you know, I, I don't necessarily want to dive deep into the data because it's, uh, I think by the time when uh, when that article was published, Andre was still, as you said yourself, like that was still a lot of work in process. So um, I already saw uh, in his Discord channel that he is, you know, working on the data. However, I know that he's a big fan of our show, so he potentially is listening. So hello, hello. Um, but before we started recording the show today, we had a discussion about that. Um, it's really tricky to actually look into the data because um, it's, not, it's, it's not as easy to identify who's actually sourcing. The title means nothing. No. Uh, you can be a, a manager, you can be a, um, a you are a recruiter, for example, and you don't even have a sourcer in your title. You potentially might have it as one of your... Oh, I uh, don't need that. I have it as a headline that I'm sourcing trainer. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've had a source of title for the last four years. I'm going to... Yeah, and, and, and that's why, like, um, it doesn't necessarily going to show the real uh, situation. However, knowing how detailed and, and how well Andre does all of the research, I'm pretty sure that he will find the the patterns and the way of actually analyzing profiles on a more in-depth way, because he's just insanely good at those things. And, and I remember when he was showing me how he's doing market mapping, it's just incredible. Mm. Um, so when the data comes from him, I'm really, um, I'm really confident that this is actually accurate um, to the level where it's possible to be accurate. Yeah. Um, but as well, the, the question is when, I remember when I was looking for sourcers and recruiters myself, you don't necessarily will know who is sourcing unless you're talking to the person. Yeah. Some of the profiles can be really empty and don't even have sourcer, but at the same time, uh, just having a title sourcer actually means nothing because we, we all know that 
um, there are a lot of different types of sourcers. So some are more researchers who just do market mapping and they do long listing, and, but they don't really engage with people. Others, they do like everything up until the moment when the person that you screen or talk to start engaging, uh, says, I'm interested, and then they move into the next stage. And then the recruiter takes over. And then you have, for example, someone like you, who is a 360 recruiter, who does a lot of sourcing. Mm -hmm. So you kind of... No, you, you, you blur the lines a lot. And, that, and that's always the thing. It's like, yeah, if you just look for title, you're not going to you know, find everybody. If you search for skills, sourcing, you're going to get some procurement people in there as well. Uh, keywords, same thing. And it's like every country have their own you know, what they call it. Uh, in Germany, it's active sourcing, you know, every kind of, it's all like our industry has a habit of coming up with a new title every five minutes. So um, like, it, like nobody calls themselves a recruiter. I you know they've been two minutes in the industry, then there's senior uh, talent acquisition whatsoever. Um, so it's like, yeah, it, it's difficult based on, you know, this data to kind of know, is there been a decline? Like I remember uh, LinkedIn did a lot of work in the last couple of years for their, um, their LinkedIn Talent Insights product, which is very much that kind of market mapping thing that you buy separately. So, you know, it's- It is really powerful. It I, is powerful. I, and I, had, I had and access to it for a short, yeah. for a brief time. It's incredible the insights that they didn't give you, but you need to but, have in but mind even that with that, that comes from only from the data that is on LinkedIn. Not just that, it's not even all the data that's on LinkedIn because what they've done is because they also know there's like titles, like there's as many as, you know, at their sand on the beach. Um, they're trying to, which is like, if you run the same search in the different, like in talent insights as you would on LinkedIn Recruiter, you'll get more people on LinkedIn Recruiter most likely because uh, talent insights, they try to bulk different titles under in like, groups or families of titles. Um, so you get good results, but it's depending on the country and what you're looking for and how far they kind of are with grouping those different things into categories, you're not going to get, you know, a, a complete picture of it. And that's a similar thing with us. It's like, I know Amazing Hiring was looking at tech recruiters at some point as well, kind of trying to map them. Uh, and if you have access to that kind of paid version of Amazing Hiring, it's a separate category, tech recruiters. But even there, it's like, there's a lot of false negatives. Um, there's a lot of people where it's like, it's not really like if I was looking for technical recruiters, that's not, you know, always what I, um, so yeah, it, it is difficult. I mean, but that's our job. It's about knowing the intricacies of looking at past titles and current titles and, you know, putting keywords the right places and kind of knowing it's like I can search for skills and keywords or separately. Um, there's never one search that's going to cover everything. Uh, and yeah, as you said, Andre is really good at like, pulling data, uh, which is also why like, I would love to kind of see when his research is over, kind of what he finds, what, what his findings are. Uh, but the Balash article was a good kind of first step with reading a little bit out of that. Uh, because yeah, there has been a spike in people that calls themselves some variety of sourcer, um, and it, but it looks like it's going down now. But I think just, just as much worse, yeah, we are specialists um, and in a world where it's very much kind of the market is driven by lots of unemployment. People are applying a lot. Um, there's going to be less investment in people like us that go out and actually find people. Um, yeah. And I think that's what we saw is in a lot of countries last year where uh, freelance sourcers and freelance recruiters uh, were let go because like companies were had hiring freezes. A lot of big companies had... Um, had layoffs so a lot of a lot of good people that normally would not be available all of a sudden became available and were actively applying for jobs uh yeah. which mean meant our jobs got you know more about looking at the people who applied rather than going out and finding them so yeah you know that's that that's what it is and you're gonna have those cycles i i was you know i've been through the same thing in 2008 2009 with the last kind of financial crisis where you had a couple of years where, you know, being a recruiter wasn't as easy. And a lot of people left the industry. I've seen a lot of them kind of come back now. But uh, I have friends who, you know, they become personal trainers for 10 years in that kind of in the middle of it uh, because recruitment was it was impossible to get a job. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Like, I don't I haven't seen a kind of same slump as I did in the financial crisis of 2008. 
Um, like a lot of the jobs are coming back now. We can see companies that like that we we worked with in the past are are kind of scaling up again, both in terms of contractors and permanent employees. So we'll see how it goes. I would I would look at this, then I would look at it again in a year, and kind of see like has it evened out or are we on an, an upswing again? And you know, uh, from um, as someone who is looking for a job right now, I I have. I have saved the search on LinkedIn for Sorcerer and, and I get like email notifications about companies that are looking for someone like me. Of course, their, their algorithm is far from Spotify or Facebook or, or, or Google's. Like they really need to, to get their stuff together. Uh, however, and there are a lot of big companies, really good brands who are expanding and who are looking for sourcers, who are looking for technical recruiters, 360 recruiters, senior managers for recruitment, even directors. So it doesn't seem that the industry is um, slowing down. No. However, I do understand where, where it, when you look at data, that's very different. Uh, it, you know, you can be looking at the number of recs that company has, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because only the internal team knows how many of those recs are actually active. And there's we, always- We've we both been in companies with, with yeah, we've both been in companies with a lot of evergreen recs that like they're always going to be there. Like they never really close them. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they always recruit for them, but they always build pipelines. Pipeline. Yeah, yeah. But no um, and a lot of them got closed last year because it's like, you don't want to be the only company in your industry with 200 open jobs if a hundred of them is just pipeline roles because people will flock to them and will expect to get an interview. So a lot of those like evergreen job posts got taken down last year. Uh, and I think a lot of them are not coming back again. So yeah, there's still a few companies that are always going to be hiring, especially recruiters and sourcers. But a lot of the kind of companies that traditionally had very big sourcing teams are not act as active at hiring as they were like a year ago or a year and a half ago. So uh, we'll kind of see where it goes. And I, I think it comes back as well. If you are, you know, a sourcer, uh, if you are a recruiter that, that kind of wants to be speciali specializing in sourcing, it's about keeping your options open. Like I've, you know, I've been in jobs where the job did not say sourcer, but by talking to the team and looking at where they were, I knew that 90% of my job was going to be sourcing, even though my title was, you know, full stack recruiter, uh, because there was no applications, like no, like nobody knew the company in that, you know, that location. So I knew it's going to be sourcing. And it's about looking at that rather than, you know, going too directly on titles. So, but yeah, do yeah. yourself a favor as well and keep learning. Uh, if you if you're very much specialized in sourcing and and the only jobs you see is is for full stack recruiting, then start finding out like where is your weak spots. It's like what is it you're still missing? Um, buy Jan's book. Uh, you know, get some inspiration from there. Like that other piece, like the other half of Jan's book that is about recruitment, the the one you didn't read because you just wanted the one about sourcing. Uh, maybe flip over and read the second half of Jan's book and understand what the whole pieces, that the whole kind of the full stack pieces, or there's specific things that you see uh, companies keep asking for, the ones that actually are hiring, but you don't feel you have, like what can you do to kind of proactively find that, um, you know, get some training on it, get some mentoring, get some coaching. Uh, there's lots of things out there and yeah, contact us. Uh, we, we both work a lot with people to kind of find out what they can do, what they're missing um, to, to kind of get to that next step that might be that, yeah they'll get that job that they actually want, but it might be called something different. And I don't know if you've noticed yesterday, but our mutual friend, friend Mark from Elastic, uh, he shared a post on Facebook as well, um, raising a question that I remember we spoke about him one year and a half ago, and it was still the same situation. So he was trying to find a technical recruiter to join his team. And I don't think he was looking for a senior person, but just a technical recruiter. And he spoke to 30 people. And out of those 30 people, only one person passed his kind of interview. And, and he wrote like really honestly, like what are the challenges? And this was one of the things that he was doing at the uh, SOSU V when he was delivering a talk, how to hire engineers and how to approach them and how to talk to them. And, um, 
and, and certain things like what is the difference between Java and JavaScript, <laughs> um, which is not the same. It, it sounds the same. Uh, I, when I was looking and trying to understand the difference myself, I, I came across this video from Code Academy and they said, um, thinking that Java and JavaScript is the same is the same as thinking about Doritos and donuts is the same because they all start with dough, uh, which kind of is a very good example because just because something sounds the same, it doesn't mean that it is. And um, I remember going back when, uh, when we were helping at the consultancy rec to rec with Andy to, um, to help people find their jobs. Um, we realized that um, what people are missing when they go to interviews is we really miss the aspect of being themselves. They try to cover this stuff up. They try to create this kind of fake bubble. Oh, I know it all. Uh, I, I've, I've done this, I've done that. If you don't know stuff, I, my, that's my strategy. Don't try to pretend that you do. You will earn more respect and the company might even give you a chance if you are honest and you say, look, I, I know stuff, but this, for example, these are the things that I might not necessarily know. I'm happy to learn. But all you need is one question and they can completely floor you. And, and I've had, you know, situations in my life when interviews went really well and some went really bad. And it always, I think it really shows the difference in how the person who is talking to you is looking at the situation. Uh, if they really want someone now and that's it and we want the results and we don't care about anything else and or if they look at that long-term picture as well so i know we kind of got off the topic uh, what we started from but it's all connected because um just explore and be curious and when you are curious you will one thing will lead to another and all you need is a one idea um and and yarn is a great source of information and those who are listening to our show, you already know that we talk about Katrina and Jan. You might say too much, but every, I would say... Every week. <laughs> but, but these are the two people who... In, 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 these are two people that are doing everything that they can in the form of sharing the content that can completely change your mindset and maybe the way you're going to work. And they are definitely the ones to follow. And, uh, and, and both of them have had a big impact in, in both of our careers and our life, both as yeah. friends, but also as mentors and, yeah, just generally good friends that have helped both of us along in kind of where we want to get to. Absolutely. And um, I think that what is really important that both of them are really humble and even though with everything that they achieved career-wise and all the different projects that they worked on, they're still very genuine. And this is my request to everyone who's working in the industry. If we want to change the industry uh, and because yes, we're sorcerers, we're recruiters, it's all the same. We're still doing the same thing. We're trying to find the best people, whether those are passive talents or those are incoming applications the end goal is the same, to help someone find a job or to fill the job for your company that you work for. But if we uh, raise the bar personally for us on how we do things, uh, remove the spammy elements of our job and we start pushing back to the business and we say, no, I'm not gonna do this. No, this is wrong. No, this is not the way it should be done. What if we do, do, do this? I went to the conference and this is what people are suggesting to do. You are the people who know the market or you should know the market or you should try to do everything you can to understand what is happening. And you are the people who can influence the decisions and, and, but use that based on data. But you need to get that information from somewhere and books and articles and a lot of research that is publicly available and different tools is the best place to, to, to do it because then if you're going to do that extra step yourself, maybe in five years from now, when someone is going to be Googling recruiters are, it's all going to be positive because it's all down to us. It's not, and there are so many incredible people out there who are doing their job and 
they're doing more than their job is actually actually asking to do. And we need to support that. And only we can actually make that change. So. Exactly. Look, let's leave it at that. I know you have a couple of talks coming up in the next week as well. Uh, where can people find you, see you, uh, listen to you talk, Doug? Um, so actually, there's going to be one talk tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be at 1 p.m. UK time. And that is called Working Lunch, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. I will um, make sure the episode is up before that and put a link to it in the notes. Um, but also sure that, yeah, if you, if you listen to this afterwards, uh, you should be able to find that talk anyway. And basically, it's going to be a very different topic. Uh, I am passionate about this. I don't think I've ever spoken about this or shared my opinion about this. Um, it's going to be a, I would say maybe like a panel discussion. It's going to be a discussion in general about um, what is harder in-house or agency recruiting. And I have some ideas that I want to share because I already mentioned quite a few times that I was, I'm in between both worlds. And uh, I believe that there are a lot of different elements to, to, to how things should be done. Um, well, because this is recorded pre <laughs> tomorrow, uh, I can say that I don't believe that it's, I don't think that the question is right. It's not about what is harder. Mm -hmm. I believe it's more about what, where you think that you can do more, um, bring more value. Yeah. And there are a lot of different people and not everyone can work in-house and not everyone can work agency. No, it's definitely something that I would want to circle back to on next week's show as well. Um, yeah, anybody who knows me knows that I started an agency as well. I've done RPO. I've been in house. I've been freelance. Uh, I'm back to essentially back to agency RPO. Um, so I've seen, I've done the whole 360 uh, literally uh, and kind of come back full circle. So I'm looking forward to the panel tomorrow and I would definitely want to pick that up next week in our show and uh, and talk more uh, and uh, if it's been a slow news week we'll probably fill a whole show with that uh, sure. I can easily see us do um, because I have a lot of thoughts about that as well and I had a lot of thoughts before I kind of joined an RPO again about what I thought I could bring from you know 20 years of experience but especially from like six seven years of of sourcing that I was missing when I was agency the first time uh, yeah. or when I was RPO. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, you're also you're also speaking at uh, another event. I think that's beginning of next week or? Oh, l and Care starts on, on the 9th. So it starts on Tuesday. So that's Tuesday. Okay, so we should- But it's, yeah. it's like four days event, but I'm on one of those days. I think okay. I'm on Tuesday actually. But the cool thing is that in both of the events, um, it's I'm I'm you know I'm going to be able to share different different ideas, yeah. and for me it's always important to to share something that potentially could be useful to the audience. It's not about me bragging about what I did. I don't I still don't feel that I I would have accomplished a lot professionally. I just feel that certain decisions in my in my career led me to having the experience in and maybe certain diverse experience as well because I remember I had some some managers who were looking at my profile and they were like okay so you you are quite a cookie like musicians salespeople <laughs> data UX and you know and, and recruiters <laughs> rank to rank and and you're doing this and you're doing that it's just I, I believe that this is how it should be like look at a lot of Look at the successful people. Uh, they don't have just one thing. Mm. Like someone like Tony Robbins. He has, I don't know how many companies now, 30, mm. 50? No, and he's supporting lots of things as well and, uh, you know, that he's passionate about. And, and so many, so many, like really an influential, not financially, but influential mentally who mm -hmm. can actually create a lot of, like, who can who can share something that completely going to transform the way you think um, that kind of level people, they have multiple projects, multiple things at the same time. However, the beauty of that is that it's not about doing the um, multitasking. 
uh, but it's more about focusing on being balanced in all different categories of your life. Mm -hmm. So you don't focus just on your career, because if you focus on your career, then your family might go into the background and then all the other things will fall apart and you might be really successful career wise. But if none of other things would work, nobody should share. None or nothing works. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I will definitely be sharing that next week. And uh, then we can uh, talk about the experience that I will have talking about how to get a job. And uh, this is definitely a topic that I'm really passionate about because I believe that my, I believe that my strategy when it comes to handling job interviews is different in the sense that I see it as a two way street. And you need to be given exactly the same amount of time to question, to, to have time to ask questions mm -hmm. as someone is asking you questions. And for example, if someone would tell, you know, like they used to, uh, I don't know, like 10, 15 years ago when you would go into job interview, they would ask you, oh, so what do you know about our company? And they would <laughs> quiz you about, you know, like all of the questions. So it's like, when the company was established and uh, basically this is Google data. Like yeah. you need to know like a pop quiz. I'm not here for a pop quiz. If I know where to find data, I will find it. Do I need to memorize it? I don't think so. Yeah. However, I think one time I did really cheeky thing when um, someone asked me, oh, what do you know about us? And they were, that company was approaching me, not the other way around. <laughs> and what do you know about me? And about us as a company, I was like, well, this is what I, what I know about you. And what do you know about me? What is not on my CV? Because we already spoke about this. You know, you can easily, if you are interviewing people and you're looking for someone to your team, especially for recruitment, for sourcing, and you're focusing on someone who was talking at, at, at the, the chances are that to find someone who talked at the conference in 2020 is really high because there were so many events. Yeah. So I believe that if you didn't bother looking or just Googling person's name before you talk to them, just to understand what, what they're doing outside of their nine to five, I think that potentially is lazy and you show that you didn't do your research because we put the pressure on candidates to do the research but we don't bother doing the research ourselves. And I don't think it's fair. So I'm, I'm going to be happy to talk about it next time. The last thing that I really wanted to share uh, was that uh, I think, again, it was Jan who, who re-shared this. Uh, so thank you, Jan, for always uh, keeping, up, uh, keeping us up to date to really cool content. Uh, there's this guy, Benjamin Strick. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Ben Doe Brown. We will put this into show notes. And he uh, is sharing a YouTube channel. Uh, he already put six videos on, online and he is calling the series of videos OSINT at home. And we already talked a bit about OSINT for those who don't know what it is. It's uh, intelligent tools diving really deep into the data, uh, you know, trying to map uh, not necessarily the, uh, like to find like this is what is used in, um, like what police and intelligence services are using in their, uh, when they're doing their in the investigations, right? And uh, quite a few people in the, in the sourcing community is already obsessed with it and they're trying to look into it and what could be done differently. Um, so out of those six videos, I can just read the titles and you will see how insane it is. So the first one is starting an in the investigation with image reverse search, um, then five ways to find Exif metadata in a photo or video, advanced search operators with translates, identify a location from a photo or video, a geolocation, creating a panorama from a video for a geolocation. Um, and then we have find when an image was taken with satellite imagery. So it's not necessarily something that you will be using daily, but just understanding and diving a little bit or having a little bit of understanding when it comes to those things can really spark some curiosity and hopefully creativity. And I will repeat myself again, for those who haven't seen, 
Don't Fuck With Cats documentary on Netflix is exactly about this. When you have a bunch of people who decide to figure out what happened and who did it, and they use all the publicly available tools to actually find the person. And it just ends up being this like manhunt. It's insane. Um, so I highly recommend, sorry about the swear words. I'm sure you're going to put a peep on it. Uh, you always do. Uh, but this is the official title, so I can't really do anything. So um... until next time, uh, it has been really nice hanging out with you again. I will see you next week. And uh, yeah, um, share this with anybody you think should, uh, should listen to us. And uh, we'll see you again. Until then. It's always a pleasure. See you next week.